relative to right triangles. And I want to warn you about something now. How many of you bought the book? Okay, how many of you actually look at the book? All right, for those of you who look at the book, stop it for this section. This book in this particular section seems to think you need to learn a new formula in order to be able to do trig on right triangles. Personally, I don't think we need to learn a new formula every time we get a new situation where we can use an old formula. And so they basically do a specialty, special use of the Pythagorean theorem when they're having right triangle trig. There's no need, we're just going to keep using the Pythagorean theorem again and again, it makes it easier. The less new stuff you have to learn, the easier things are. So, some of you have probably done some trig on right triangles. Basically, we're going to calculate all the trigonometric functions um, of any right triangle. Now, notice I'm specifying right triangles. We'll get to non-right triangles later. Um, as long as we've got two of the dice, we can always find a third, and so we can calculate functions. We can use trig functions to calculate the lengths of sides. And this is where a lot of word problems come in, because in the word problems, we can almost always draw triangles to figure out how to do things with our trig functions and word problems. Now, two pieces of vocabulary come in here. And it's important you know what's what. There's the angle of elevation and the angle of depression. The angle of elevation is from the ground the person is looking upward. This angle from the ground to the line of sight is the angle of elevation. <coughs> what do you think the angle of depression is going to be? You're going to be up in the air. So usually you're in a plane or something that flies. And if you take a straight line where, like straight line course where the plane would be going, and the person looks down from the plane toward the ground, from that straight line to their line of sight down is the angle of depression. Personally, I don't want you looking at any angle of depression having to jump out of the plane and go, well, my angle of depression is temporarily. You know, because then sooner or later you're going to hit the ground and that's not good. We always stick you with things where there's a plane or a weather balloon or just a balloon. Any, you know, any of those are in there. All right. Let's start with our trig functions and define them on a basic right triangle. I'll redraw my right triangle up here. It'll make, make it a little easier. X. So here's a right triangle. When we define our trig functions on a right triangle, we are not talking about the right angle. We do trig functions on the right angle based on the unit circle because it's an easy one. We instead are either talking about one of the other two angles in the right triangle. Do you guys want to pick one of them for me here and call it X? Which one do you want to call X? Doesn't matter. You pick one. The one going up. The one going up? Okay. We're going to call this angle X. Now, the sides of a right triangle have names relative to angle X. <laughs> this side, which is part of angle X, which is right next to it, is referred to as the adjacent side. This other leg of the right triangle, which has absolutely nothing to do with making up angle X, is referred to as the opposite side. And this side opposite the right angle is always referred to as the Hypotenuse, so this is the only time I'm going to spell it. HYP is usually how I do it. OPP, HYP, ADJ, then I don't have to remember how to spell all of these. Now, there are several of you who probably have heard of Sokotoa, yes? You 
can also remember it that way where you just use the first letters. And I'll explain Sokotoma in a minute for those of you who haven't heard it. Based on the names of the sides, we define the sine of x as the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Those lengths. And since your hypotenuse is always going to be the longest side of your right triangle, this will be a number less than 1. Your sine function is always going to be a number less than 1. We define the cosine of x in terms of sides of the right triangle as the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And then we're going to go ahead and define the tangent of x in terms of sides, but we really don't have to because we can use our definitions of tangent from what we knew, which was the sine of x over the cosine of x. Well, if we take the sine of x and put it over the cosine of x, what are we left with in terms of sides? Opposite on the top and adjacent on the bottom. Now, if this, in your book, I think I did it here too, it continues on with secant, cosecant, cotangent, but again, we don't need those because we can remember them in terms of this cosecant is what? One over the sine of the function of the angle. So when I put one over the opposite of the hypotenuse, what does that do to this? It flips it over and makes it hypotenuse over opposite. What's your secant? Yeah, what is it in terms of sine oh. and cosine? It's one over cosine. So when I put one over the cosine of the angle, that's going to be one over the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which will flip it over and make it hypotenuse over adjacent. And what about your cotangent? It's 1 over tangent or cosine over sine. Either way, it's going to flip this over and make it adjacent over opposite. So those are ones I wouldn't really expect you to memorize. These two would be the ones to just remember. Sine of x is the opposite over the hypotenuse, and the cosine of x is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. But so what more is it going to give us cosecant and all that stuff? Oh, no, it'll it might give them to you, but I don't expect you to have them memorized. Just go oh. through the, if I know the sine, the cosecant is 1 over the sine, and I can work backwards. Or not backwards, but work through that. The less stuff you have to memorize, I think the easier this is. And so, you know, we knew that from last time, so we just keep using the same things. Here I have a triangle. <coughs> it's a right triangle. It's got a side of length 5, another side of length 3, and I'm supposed to find some things about it. First thing. What is the sine of x? In order to find the sine of x, what do I need to do? Well, what do I, which sides do I need for sine of x? I need a hypotenuse and, and the opposite side. OK, here's x. Where is the opposite side? It's this one over here. It's 3. Where is the hypotenuse? It's this one. Um, I don't know how long that is. So what should I do to find out how long that is? Yeah, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I'm going to use my Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a is going to be, we'll make it 5, it doesn't matter. b, we're going to make um, 3. So I have 25 plus 9 equals 34. Uh, no, excuse me. <laughs> It does equal 34, but it equals c squared. Things can't just go away. 34 is equal to c squared. So what's c? What's in minus? Whenever I take the square root of both sides, this particular information does not tell you anything about c. This is not the, so it's related to the triangle, but this is an abstraction of this process. And so when we do the abstract version, we've got to remember the plus or minus. Now we've got to relate it back to our triangle. In relating it back to our triangle, which one of these do we keep? Why? Because length is positive. <coughs> Bless you. So our length C is going to be the square root of 34. And I highly recommend you do not eat.